Joining me right now is Warden Kristen Penn. Warden Penn, you uh, you work for the state dog warden, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to talk to you a little bit here at the Pennsylvania Farm Show about uh, our our four-legged friends, uh, the animals that we may have as pets or in our homes. Uh, I know one of the recent uh, calls we've been receiving in our district office is about animals being left out in the cold. So I was wondering if you could help clarify what the law is and how people could uh, help to take care of their animals and keep them safe when we're experiencing cold weather throughout the winter months. That's not exactly a topic I will actually be able to go into too much. And the reason for that is, which is a big reason we're here that we try to educate people on is Libre's law specifically, what is of course bringing a lot of this about, is under the Title 18 of the cruelty statute. We do not enforce cruelty. Everything that we enforce is under the dog law itself and the rabies law. So it's two separate laws. So I can't comment too much on about it just because it's not a section of law that we ourselves have jurisdiction over. Sure. Now, if someone would uh, happen to find an animal that may be being treated cruelly, uh, left outside or something of that nature, who would you recommend that they contact? Hmm. State and local police, they are the agencies that are able to enforce both the dog law and cruelty. You can also call um, if the area has a local humane officer, or there's also the hotline for the Pennsylvania SPCA, that they have um, agents that are signed in to enforce in all areas of the county. So if someone calls and leaves a message for the SPCA, they can send an officer out to check that out. Now, uh, what are some of the laws or items that you would enforce? I would guess uh, licensing would be something that is through your department. So why don't you explain a little bit about that to us? Absolutely. Licensing is a very important part of our job. Um, two big, big points on that. One, of course, is a big part of our job is picking up stray dogs. And if dogs don't have the identification on them for, for us to be able to trace back to who they belong to, that dog can end up going to a shelter that's either counties away or even across the state. And the likelihood of a person's dog getting back home to them can end up being slim to none. So ensuring your dog has a license ensures the likelihood of your dog getting back to you if, heaven forbid, it would get out. Not only that, but licensing is a big part of funding in our department. We are a self-funded department, and without our funds, we wouldn't exist. So we wouldn't be here to help citizens and help their dogs. But not only that, we enforce and investigate dog bites. Like I said, we pick up stray dogs. We deal with kennels, inspecting kennels, and also prosecuting those who operate kennels illegally. So uh, if you need to license your dog, uh, each county, I would assume, has uh, their own process or their own office. How would you recommend someone go about finding out how to license their dog in their local area? The main thing is you, of course, would want to contact your county treasurer, give them a call, find out how to do it and what to do. We also have at our disposal applications that we can hand out to citizens that they can mail that information in. And most counties are actually online now. So you can be directed to a website and just pay for it right online and have it stri sent straight to your house. Sure. Now we had a, a, a dog that we were able to take a couple pictures with here a little bit earlier and I understand he knows some tricks. Uh, can you tell me uh, his name and, and a little bit about the dog? Sure. His name is Jax. He's a Mastiff Lab Mix. He's my pet. Uh, anytime we do events like this, we always like to try to bring one of our own with us. It helps to draw people in to see who we are, find out what we're doing because being in uniform, we can sometimes scare people. So having one of our furry friends with us helps break that ice and break that tension. Um, he knows basic commands, but he does have one one special trick that my husband and I taught him that most kids around here love to see. <laughs> and what is that trick? I, I can show you. Sure. Jack, come, sit. Uh-uh, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Yes, now you can have a cookie. There you go. Good boy. So uh, you were mentioning that the dogs make people uh, a little more comfortable to talk to you or to open up. Uh, I have a four-year-old and a five-year-old, and uh, we try to teach them a little bit about dog safety. Of course, they love animals. Uh, what is some advice that you would give to a parent about uh, having kids approach animals that may be strange to them or unknown? Always the big thing and the number one thing I like to push is to make sure that kids ask 
that you'll always ask before you just run up and pet a dog. Because there are certainly dogs that can be out in public that may not get along with other people or just may not like strangers. So the big thing, of course, is asking. And then, of course, ensuring that you teach your kids to be nice, not getting in their face, not pulling their ears, pulling their tail. So just the general practices of being nice. <laughs> sure. So uh, is there a website that your office has where people can obtain additional information? Could you share that with me? Sure. We do have our own website, and that is www.licenseyourdogpa.com. If you head there, you can check out all the information on our bureau, get contact information for your treasurer or even your local warden. Now, uh, my last question is a question about the farm show. I know you're here for work, but what is your favorite part of the Pennsylvania Farm Show, aside from educating people about our four-legged friends? I gotta go with milkshakes. <laughs> milkshakes, milkshakes is, uh, I think that's at the top of the list for everyone here.